Welcome to Electron Online, and here we're going to talk about the drag coefficient. Now, what is the drag coefficient? Well, the technical meaning of the drag coefficient is it's called the fluid dynamic drag. It's also called the hydrodynamic drag, and it's particularly dependent on two factors on the object. One of them is what we call the form drag. By, by the most important part of the object is the shape of the object, the form of the object, and different forms will cause a different drag. The other one is the skin friction, the friction, so to speak, between the fluid and the object itself, the skin of the object. It's a lesser factor, but we still need to take that into account as well. But what we're going to do here is we're really going to concentrate on the shape itself and how that affects the way objects move through a fluid. If you can see here an object being dropped in a fluid and assuming that the density of the object is greater than the density of the fluid, the object will be uh, moving downward. So there's the force of gravity acting on the mass of the object. So there's obviously the weight of the object pulling it down. And then there's three forces pushing back. One of them is the buoyancy force. The other one is the force caused by the viscosity coefficient. And the third one is caused by the drag coefficient. So what is the drag coefficient really in, in a real sense? Well, what it is, is as an object moves through a fluid, it could be horizontally, vertically, doesn't matter, but as it's moving through a fluid, it has to push away, out of the way, the fluid that's there where it wants to take its place. And the shape of the object has a lot to do with how easy it is to move the fluid out of the way. If we take a look at the equation where we have a, the, the, the force associated with the drag, uh, with the, uh, what we call the drag coefficient, it's equal to one half times the drag coefficient. By the way, the drag coefficient is just a number without any units to it. The density of the fluid, the cross-sectional area of the object slicing through the fluid, and then the velocity squared. So you see that the force due to the drag coefficient is amplified by the velocity. It's the velocity squared, so you double the velocity at four times the force associated with the drag coefficient. But again, it's how easily the object can move the fluid out of the way. Not only do you have to move it out of the way, you have to give that fluid inertia, or a moment of inertia, so to speak. It, it has to give the fluid some velocity, some movement out of the way, and all that requires a force. So you're kind of pushing things out of the way and, and moving it out of the way so that the object can slice through the fluid. Notice here, the shape has a tremendous effect on how much force is required. If it's a sphere moving through the fluid, the drag coefficient is 0.47. Well, what does that mean? Well, it's really in relation to the others as well. So when you compare it to the others, you get kind of a feel for it. Notice that the half sphere moving through the fluid, it's actually a little bit less of a drag coefficient. And if a cone moves through the fluid, it's actually a little bit more. But they're all fairly close together. But notice how a difference it makes when it's a cube trying to make it through the fluid. Imagine a cube making through the fluid. It does have a very good, what we call, aerodynamic shape or fluid dynamic shape in this case. And so therefore you can see that the drag coefficient is much greater for a cube. Now if we take the cube and we move it so that it's pointed forward, so that it's kind of an angled cube, then you can see that the drag coefficient drops somewhat. A long cylinder has a drag coefficient, which is less than a cube, but more than a sphere. And notice that if the, sh if the cylinder becomes shorter, the drag coefficient goes up by quite a bit. It really has to do with how the fluid can go around Notice you have this flat surface, you have this long shape right here, and then of course a, an abrupt stop where the fluid goes back in on the other side. All that holds back on the ability for the object to move through the fluid. Notice a streamlined body has a tremendously small drag coefficient, and if you take a look at that, that looks a lot like an airplane wing. An airplane wing is shaped in such a way that it very easily slides through the air to the fluid. Air is a fluid in physics. And so you can see that this, this is a very low drag coefficient. Now notice that if we cut it in half and we have a smooth, or I should say a flat surface at the bottom, the drag coefficient more than doubles over having a, a, a symmetric shape where it kind of bends around in both directions. So notice there's a lot of differences in the drag coefficient between the different shaped objects. And so we're now going to do some examples of how we use various shapes, and this particular the sphere is a common shape that we use in examples, to see how the drag coefficient affects the way in which objects move through a fluid, and also we'll take a look and see how the velocity has a bearing on it, and whether or not the drag coefficient is a bigger factor in holding back moving through a fluid, or is it the viscosity coefficient and the viscosity of the fluid itself, because the fluid itself, since there are intermolecular forces, also causes fluid to kind of make it more difficult to move through that fluid and so we'll see how the 
the viscosity coefficient affects the movement to the fluid and how the drag coefficient affects it and when one is bigger than the other if there's a difference and you'll see there actually is a difference depending upon the shape the size and the velocity of the object and so we'll see a little bit more about that in the videos to come